Hello everybody and welcome back to Waveland Park and Merry Christmas to all of you guys that watch my videos as soon as I drop them. So I hope you guys are having a great time with family, lots of love, delicious food, lots of presents and everything that you wish for. So yeah, as you can see our guests are having their food in our restaurant in The Orchid in Waveland Park. And yeah, we built that restaurant in the last episode and this is going to be a restaurant with a great view. And in today's episode, we are going to create this great view. Yeah, so that means we are building the otter habitat. So we already do have otter habitat for the giant otters and now it's time to build something for the, li uh, for the little ones for the Southeast Asian small clawed otters or as I call them the tiny otters yeah so um, yeah this episode is not that long as Waveland episodes usually are because I had the structure of the habitat already built in here so all I had to do is to make the backdrop here for our visitors part that is going through the habitat and also do some decorations and some fun stuff for uh, for our otters as well as to play a little bit with lighting once again uh, we already have great lighting inside the restaurant and um, yeah in a later stage of the video we might see uh, what I do underwater as well so that our guests will have a nice view at the animals and we have such a nice atmosphere in the end. Yeah, so uh, first of all I created the backdrop here um, which I used the new materials from the Twilight. Well, not that new anymore because we got another DLC in the meantime, um, the Grasslands Animal Pack. Um, yeah, but I used the stalactites, stalagnites, uh, I don't know how to spell it correctly in English. It's already hard enough to do that in German. Um, yeah, but I used them and um, made something like a little backdrop for our path that this path doesn't float in the air and gives the whole thing a nice look. And it also looks a little bit like muddy, jungly, yeah, something like that. So I thought this would be a nice addition to this. Um, yeah, and after that I decided I wanted to have something or we needed to have something like a fence on there as well. Um, because we surely don't want our guests to be able to fall into the habitat of the otters. Um, well, I might not be worried about the otters uh, getting eaten. Um, the people um, might be getting eaten by the otters. Um, that definitely won't happen, I think. Um, yeah, but uh, sure, we don't want them to fall into the habitat and hurt themselves. So I tried to build something a little bit different as I do most of the times. So create a new fence with these wooden planks with this uh, small ones here and um, I tried to have something bigger on top of it. Um, I was not quite happy with all of this wooden planks that we have in the game. Um, I'm very, don't get me wrong, I'm very happy with them but I um, I thought they don't match the fence that I'm building here. So I was looking for something um, uh, to put on top of it as I told you already and um, in the end I found something like uh, some wooden posts like this here and yeah in the end I'm very happy how the whole thing looks now. So this is also going to be the last episode for this year. So for 2022 in Waveland Park, we're going to have a few more episodes next year for sure, because we're um, far from done. And um, I'm going definitely to go back into this park and um, create some exciting new stuff. Um, next one is going to be for the platypus. Um, where our viewers are also going to pass the habitat in some kind of way as they are leaving the uh, 
the path uh, around the otter habitat which you can see already here um, as they are going to some kind of a gate on the left side of the habitat yeah and after that um, I'm um, thinking about yeah not not something for uh, for any more crocs um, we definitely will have some more crocs in here but i think um, we already do have the croc aviary in this area so i think we should build something different for the next time and i'm thinking about a bigger area with uh, some yeah some kind of a show area for the Californian sea lions and also for the gray seals that is something that we are going to do after the river's edge is finished I already do have some great ideas in my head um, yeah as I as I was starting this park I was um, very inspired by the sea world parks so i'm thinking about something like this like shamu stadium or something like that for uh, the sea lions yeah but um, as i do all of the time i'm going with the flow and see where it leads me to but this is this is some kind of the idea that i already have in my mind um, what I was building here was something like a water slide that I wanted to have in this habitat. As you know, these uh, small clawed otters are very cute and playful and uh, always in action. So I wanted to have something like this in the habitat. So I used these waterfall pieces and um, just turned them around in uh, some kind of an angle and um, I tried to have something like a water slide in here. The great thing is um, you might see it in the end of the video, um, the animals do really use it. Well, not a slide because it's not an enrichment item with some kind of animation for that, but uh, they are walking over it. So you could, uh, yeah, you could pretend they are using it as a slide. There. They are not actually sliding down but as I said it is usable for the animals and that was the whole point that I was looking for yeah the next thing was um, once again lots of decorating with rocks and plants all over the place um, to make the habitat look natural and yeah also make it accessible for our zookeepers um, because you might have noticed the entrance gate here is right next to the orchid so our zookeepers um, wouldn't have been able to access the area where the animals are and they would only just have this tiny area right here next to the restaurant where they could go into the habitat and put down food for them and take care of them so this uh, definitely wasn't enough so I had, to, uh, I had to do something about it I was very happy that it was enough to put down some rocks here to build something like a natural bridge that the zookeepers actually could use to go onto the island and put down some food for the animals and uh, clean up the habitat and um, yeah stuff like that um, and that is a problem that I do have a lot of the times I think I told you in the last episode um, yeah um, sometimes or many times in the game I start building something and then I get carried away so I'm building and doing stuff and um, don't thinking one step further so um, as I was building the habitat for these uh, tiny otters I didn't have in my mind or I forgot about um, that I had to put in an entrance for the keepers so that not just the animals 
um, uh, can roam around in the habitat but also that it is actually usable so that the keepers can bring in the animals and also can take care of them so that was a huge problem as I was building the orchid uh, I found out oh my god I, am, I that took so much space away I have to find some little tiny space where I can make it possible for our keepers to go into the habitat and also I already had put down the path for our visitors that was going through the habitat which was something like a last minute idea as well because I was um, I was doing stuff with the restaurant and then I thought oh my god that would be nice when our visitors don't just see the animals underwater but also can see them from above and uh, yeah so that happened I built the path and the problem was even bigger to put in some kind of a gate where uh, yeah where our keepers can actually go into the habitat but in the end it all worked out um, I made it possible and um, yeah so here's the part um, that I told you about um, putting down lights underwater so that our guests actually can see the animals and in, uh, in nighttime as well um, I used these big um, lamps is it called lamps or what what do you call it in English um, but I didn't want the visitors to be able to see them so I uh, sank them into the ground so that you can't see them anymore and this is very cool because um, you still have the light um, uh, from these uh, things you can still see it but uh, you can't see the actual lamp so that is a, a huge improvement or that came in very handy for me uh, and made the whole thing look nicer i also wanted to have something here uh, some lighting for uh, the waterfall but it was not that easy because as i used this huge um, lamp uh, it just made uh, something like this um, this foggy thing around the light and didn't look that good so I decided to go for some smaller parts and uh, yeah in the end um, it worked yeah and um, uh, this is also something that I wanted to do or uh, that I had to do that I usually don't uh, do that much um, I'm putting down um, yeah plants underwater because I, most of the time I don't care about that because uh, most of the times when I build habitats where, animal, uh, where animals can swim um, uh, viewers or our guests are not able to see the animals underwater um, a little bit different here because our guests definitely can see them especially in the restaurant when they are sitting at the tables and having a look at the animals and you might think when you go into a restaurant like this and having nice elegant dinner you don't want to see something uh, yeah some kind of plain boring habitat all of the time that you are sitting there and um, so I decided I have to go for some for foliage and for some rock work underwater as well and also I wanted to have something like a little shelter on um, yeah on the land area for our animals so where they can hide a little bit from the guests so that they are not uh, getting too stressed out for uh, for our guests and um, yeah something is something really tiny that you can also see in some uh, zoos for smaller animals just a, a little hard shelter nothing nothing very special I'm having lots of fun right now in um, building realistic stuff in Planet Zoo or semi-realistic stuff uh, not over-the-top realistic um, unfortunately this is not going to happen here in Waveland Park um, I, uh, yeah, I started very detailed in here 
but uh, from the beginning on I didn't do it too realistically so that means I didn't build some uh, proper backstage areas or uh, indoor areas for the animals even uh, though we have some for the flamingos um, yeah I guess we also do have those for the giant otters and for the capybaras but uh, yeah that's just some uh, plain building with a little bit of decoration on the outside and nothing done on the inside so um, yeah but that is definitely something that I'm doing more and more and more in my other builds and uh, that is definitely something that you might see more in the future as well because um, yeah you know I have two series right now on my channel uh, one that is Waveland Park, two series in uh, in English uh, language, I might say. Uh, one is Waveland Park and the other one is Lemington Zoo, which is my English franchise series. Um, even though it is Christmas, I have to tell you something that might be not very... Um, how do I say that? Um, not much of good news because I decided I have to close down Lemington Zoo. Um, I'm going to make a few more episodes um, uh, until mid or end of January but after that I think I'm closing the zoo because yeah it is a little bit stressful to have two franchise series and two sandbox series so um, yeah and also I don't have uh, I by far I don't have the views in Lemington Zoo uh, that I do here in Waveland or in my German series so um, yeah so I'm thinking I'm uh, taking a little step down closing Lemington and um, once we are finished with uh, yeah with Waveland I'm going to have another sandbox series here uh, in English language for uh, for you guys I hope you enjoy that um, and I think it is going to be also an Australian zoo um, but not with just semi-aquatic animals but uh, with with all kinds of animals maybe something like uh, I would uh, I would have so much fun with building something like a city zoo uh, I've never done that um, and um, yeah I'm so interested in doing that so I'm thinking of creating some kind of a city zoo for you guys I hope you will like that. You can tell me in the comment section what you think about that uh, or if you're very sad that I'm not continuing doing Lemington. So yeah, let me let me know in the comment section. So here's now the... Is it the last part? I guess it is almost the last part of building the habitat for the otters. Um, I went into the fence once again and um, change things a little bit. Um, uh, this is something that I'm doing more and more and more um, uh, this time. More and more and more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that I'm doing more and more and more recently. Um, something that Caesar creates inspired me very, very heavily. Um, and because he's uh, he's a genius in uh, building barriers for the animals that look realistic and um, so I yeah I took him for an inspiration and um, so I decided to have this uh, concrete pieces that connect the path uh, towards the barrier and also have the barrier look a little bit more realistic and not too over the top so sometimes um, by building barriers less is more and gives the whole thing a, a little more like a classical vibe. Yeah, and after putting down the barriers I copied the sunshade from the capybaras around 
and put it in between so that our visitors uh, actually have a nice viewing gallery for the animals as well. And I think it connects the whole vibe in this area very, very good. Um, especially right next to the crane gardens, which is a very specific and a very uh, heavy themed um, habitat. So the more classic look here on the other side of the habitat, um, yeah, connects connects very well with the crane gardens. And also with the restaurant. Yeah, and that also made me think about changing up the whole path. So I decided I wanted to have this uh, darker path in here, not the wooden one because the wooden uh, the wooden one is a little bit too adventurous to gamey and um, not very realistic so i wanted to have something that would look a little bit more realistic but still um, yeah but still connect with the vibe in this area and i think the whole path thing looks so much better now um, i hope you guys see it the same way that i do uh, and you enjoy it as well, um, let me know in the comments what you think about that. But I think this dark path here looks so much better than the wooden one did. It gives the whole area a little more classy look. Yeah, the next thing was um, building some kind of a fence with a gate in here as well, because I don't want our visitors to go back there and um, walk into the habitat of the otters so i built some little kind of fencing around here uh, where our keepers can uh, go into the backstage area and into the habitat yeah I had to connect the whole thing with our work zone so that everything is uh, going to work yeah, because I had a little bit of a problem because I didn't have that much um, not guest facilities, staff facilities around here. Um, I had to put some into the house, um, yeah, into the temple or house uh, in Crane Gardens because it was too much stuff to do in the river's edge for our keepers. Even though we had a big staff area um, right next to the, um, yeah, to the beginning of the river's edge. But uh, our paths were so long and I had so many problems with uh, the keepers not being able to feed uh, the many capybaras that were in, um, in the capybara habitat, uh, habitat on time. So that uh, unfortunately, lots of the animals uh, were close to starving so um, yeah i had to build a new staff area for the animals and now everything is fine and every animal is taken care of now yeah so um with that being said we are already at the end of the video we are going to have a look at the animals right here in the restaurant in the orchid with these with this beautiful underwater view and i only can imagine how great it would be if you were sitting in there having your burgers like these guys here or ice cream and having a, this great view um, for the animals or even though at night time when you are having a fancy kind of dinner and uh, with all the lights down there we might see that uh, later in a few minutes um, yeah and having having this great atmosphere there yeah but I think I'm going to leave you guys alone now with the animals so you can enjoy them a little more and also the view from the restaurant and all around the habitat and um, yeah I hope you did enjoy it as I said in the beginning of the video I wish 
Oh my god, this was a huge jump off the author. <laughs> um, I wish all of you guys Merry 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 Christmas and also a Happy New Year. Um, yeah, because the year is already coming to an end very quick. So we will see each other in about two weeks or so. Where we are going to build a beautiful habitat for the platypus. Uh, until then, have a great time, have a great Christmas, as I said in the beginning, with great food, presents, lots of love, friends and whatever you wish for. And I hope to see you guys very soon. If you liked the video, just hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any videos in the future and will also make me a little Christmas present with your subscription. And yeah, hope to see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.